Okay, good morning. Um, so I mentioned about going to the conference to my son and driving there and uh, Jacob wants to come with. So he will be my sidekick on this trip. Um, we're going to plan it during the summer. He needs a job because he doesn't have a job right now. So the whole point is, is we've got to come up with uh, the money to uh, actually fund this trip because it's going to cost a bit. You know, when you, when it's worked out, it's uh, it's going to run probably about two grand to come down there and drive down there. But the drive is well worth it. And um, he can help drive, which is a good thing. If I bring my little car, it shouldn't cost too much for gas, but we'll see. Um, <clears throat> just got to save up money. That's all. Uh, I'm working every day to uh, to do this. So I really am looking forward to actually going on this road trip with my son. We've never done anything like that. And uh, just local, but... Uh, a good little road trip like that will be interesting. Um, <clears throat> he definitely needs a job. He doesn't have a job, and so he's actually tapped out. And we're we're you know providing for him right now, which is good. This is okay. Um, something will come along, Lord willing, for him, and uh, he'll get some money to go on the trip with me too. It'll be great. I'm really looking forward to it. And I sure as heck want to drive rather than fly. It's a nightmare in Canada here, I guess, flying now. I don't watch the news, but I seen a little bit the other night of how backed up the airports are. It's just stupid. <clears throat> but it's not going to get any better. So I figure, uh, figure, you know, freedom of the open road is way better <laughs> in a lot of ways. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, this is God's will, and if it is to be, it will be. Okay, so this part here is the love, love alone has vital value. Um, <clears throat> God's love. And it's God's glory. And it, God's glory is the universal goal. From the tiniest insect in its seemingly aimless way, to the most sovereign sun star in its parabolical path. All have one common aim, one pure purpose to perform. Men may deem the one a foolish, fruitless wandering, and on the other hand, they cannot see the star's objective. But God has harnessed both to his chariot of glory. The earth is his most fruitful field. Mankind is the creature fittest to display his varied excellence. To trace God's footsteps in the earth, that is, to, that is the true history of humanity. Such a narrative will yet transform this darkling world into the brightest of the heavenly, heavenly luminaries, whose effulgent rays will reach the utmost borders of the universe and radiate the deepest recesses of God's love for his whole creation. God's goal is not gained until he receives the heartfelt adoration of all his creatures. A great, as great as his efforts on our behalf are, they are but the means to make him known. Ephesians does not find its climax in the secret itself, but in the prayer for its appreciation. A knowledge of the secret is not sufficient or satisfactory to God unless it includes a heart-hungry occupation and enjoyment of the surpassing love of Christ. <clears throat> Even before the secret was made known, the apostle could say, If I should be perceiving all secrets, yet have no love, I am nothing. 1 Corinthians 13, 2 Nothing has any vital value unless it leads to love. It is the glory of God's wisdom that all things in the universe, including sin and hate, shall be lured into the livery of love and consumed by it. At present, most of God's creatures are out of harmony with him. He is either unknown, ignored, or defied. 
the ideal relationship with God is well expressed and by the word complement. His creatures should combine with him to make one harmonious whole. All that is in him should find a response in them. There should be such mutual recipro reciprocation in every relationship of life as well as will be most delightful to both. As creator, we should take our place as his creatures. As father, we should be his beloved sons. He the reconciler, we the reconciled. He the deliverer, we the delivered. However, more than this, we are accorded a place with Christ in his work of revealing him to the celestial hosts. It is only as we ourselves are filled with his affection that it can overflow to others. His glorious riches. No epistle in the scriptures is so full of harmonies as Ephesians. There is a continual assurance that each phase of our blessing is in accord with all the rest. Our sonship suits the delight of his will. The forgiveness of our offenses is raised on the scale to harmonize with the riches of his grace. The secret of his will is a consonant with his delight. Our pre-designation is in union with his purpose. Paul's dispensation or administration agrees with God's grace, which in its turn is attuned to his powerful operation. The insight of the celestials is in line with the purpose of the eons. So now, power is desired such as will harmonize with his glorious riches. It's broken down like that in Ephesians. Um, if you actually look um, in the concordant commentary, you can see each chapter broken down, um, what each part actually expresses in context. So it's good to have that commentary along with the concordant version. And then you're going to get a good idea of what it's saying through the whole of the scriptures. And it's, it's healthy for study. So definitely, along with the concordant version, have that concordant commentary. That way then you can understand what the language is and what it means. And it's awesome that way. <clears throat> there are many men of vast wealth. The fortunes have been a, a man amassed with which are amazing great as is their material magnificence they are sadly lacking in divine glory much of our unrighteousness and crime is connected with money it occasions far more misery than it alleviates in general riches are a menace to society yet all will acknowledge that wealth has power it is fast becoming the paramount force in human affairs it overrides social prestige and political influence. What could we not accomplish with an unlimited command at me of means? Yeah, you think about Tesla, you think about the billionaires in the on the planet. Well, there's more billionaires on the planet than there ever was ever in history. And they're amassing more and more and more. Yet one thing cannot be bought by all the wealth of all the world, and that is love. God's wealth alone has the divine glory that influences the affections. Outwardly, we, we may be as weak as Timothy with his frequent infirmities. We may be clothed in rags and live in the meanest of shelters. There may be nothing to indicate that we are rolling in, a real, in, real, in the real riches. This wealth is not for the outer man at present. It is spiritual and for the spirit. It is for the man within. So this is how we store it up from within. The treasures in our heart, which in turn is given outward <clears throat> in the sense of love. And that's God's love within our hearts that he placed there. It is Christ that paid the price for all humanity. And if we can see the love of God, through Christ's sacrifice, then we can really get it and understand God's overwhelming power in his love for his creation. Men behold the external appearance. God looks on the heart. 
through his spirit our hearts become the habitation of Christ. This is the ground of our strength. The meanest human heart indwelt by Christ has a glory that surpasses the temple of Solomon. All its moral values are living in him. Grounded in love, our vitality and stability depend upon the apprehension of God's love. As a plant seeks its sustenance and strength in the soil, so we should search for our sustentation and support in the subsoil of all of God's activities. The fact of his affection, we can flourish in no other ground. He alone can He alone can our roots find nurture and our trunk find strength. Both of these are necessary for fruit. The most beautiful tree in all my garden fell to the ground. It had ample roots, but was not well grounded. It could not withstand the winds of adversity. How many of us have failed to fasten firmly on the love transcendent? Only in this can we stand and bring forth fruit for God's delectation. Nothing else will delight him. No substitute should satisfy us. Hence, let us pray this prayer for ourselves. Let us make it a petition for all the saints. Only thus can we grasp these immeasurable measurements. Okay, so we're going to go into the dimensions again. Um, the breadth, the length, the height, the depth. So it's broken down in Ephesians, and it's just so beautiful. And the prayer in Ephesians is for us. If you look it up, it's in Ephesians chapter 3. And I'm going to share it again through this article. It's shared, and um, I will share it from directly from the scriptures because we need to understand this prayer. You know, it's a spirit of wisdom from God that we need and understand. In understanding what his love really is, um, for each one of us, we go through every kind of experience necessary as God gives it um, to train us. We are being trained. I've said this many, many times. I know this from personal experience. You know, through my whole life, I've been trained through every possible angle that God brought me through. I am being trained for a purpose that God has. He is creating vessels of honor when it comes to the body of Christ. And these vessels of honor have a celestial calling. They will be there reconciling celestial beings um, it's truly a tremendous calling and why would we not want to grasp a hold of it uh, and hold on to it dearly because this is where God's love will go out to his whole universe celestial, terrestrial, subterranean all will acclaim Christ as Lord Jesus Christ as Lord so this is how it's going to work the reconciliation of all that God may be all and in all so Grace and peace. Have a beautiful Tuesday.